Hi, this is Matt Tebow, and I'm going to help you use Audacity to view a spectrogram in order to better interrogate sound. I'll play this clip for you once. It's only six seconds long, and then you can pause the movie and write down all the things you heard. Okay, if you haven't paused it and you're ready to know, you're hearing the sound of a cat two cats actually in my kitchen yesterday and amplitude shows me a few things there's a different sound here there are these sounds that kind of come and go these meows but the spectrogram is going to give me a very different way to see this sound so let's turn on that spectrogram view and here it is six seconds there's time and from low to high there's frequency all the way up to 20,000 Hertz as high as human ears typically can hear when they're healthy. Let's listen again, and this time we can see some things that we're also going to hear in a different way than we did before. Okay, let's start to talk about some of the things we notice. Of course, first off there's the meows, and they are here and here and here, and a fourth one over here. There are these two prominent sounds that we can hear and notice. Gregory Bateson said information is a difference that makes a difference and if I was zoom in on the spectrum I can get a better look at these um, sounds by instead of going all the way up to 20,000 since there's a lot up here I'm not really paying attention to we can click down here and now we've got up to 10,000 we can start to see these contours a bit better and of course there's multiples of it because the cat sounds have overtones and these overtones are what we see as multiple layers we could even click again and have 5000 be the maximum and we really see these contours strongly I'm seeing a cat sound here that starts up high and comes down and then rises back up at the end let's listen yeah there's a little bit of a rise again at the end but yeah right here it is that's great. And there's a couple other sounds happening at the same time. Look at this one. Very steep down, and then it comes back up. It's a little scoop. There it is. Fantastic. This third one, you can see the contour. It slides down a little. And it's very quick. <laughs> and these are two separate cats. One cat, and then the other answers. A little cat, and then the other one answers again with this one that's got a very rising and then falling. So what just seemed like four meows become four very different utterances that have different tonal shapes, different dynamics, etc., etc. Let's listen to the whole six seconds again. And this last one's almost got a little bit of a purr to it, too. All right, so if I back back out and take a look again, out to the full spectrum. I notice that these two sounds are also very prominent and I can see that they kind of go from low all the way up to high which is something fascinating. Uh, it's a percussive sound. It doesn't have a focused tone, right? Uh, one thing is when something is red it's a higher amplitude than when it's blue or gray is actually silence. So what I'm noticing is this is very prominent in the lower part of the frequency, and then it dies off in contrast to this one, which has lots more of the upper frequencies stronger. So what I would say is this one should sound more of a thud or duller. This one should have a brighter sound, even though they're both percussive. Let's listen to the whole thing and focus on these two sounds. There it is, uh, and it sounds just like that. There's another thing you might start to notice. So these six seconds are starting to become more and more complex. There are all these other blue sounds going through, and these are the sounds of my wife's feet as she walks toward the refrigerator and opens up and then closes two of these little butter drawers or other things like that. So see if you can notice visually and then track when these sounds occur. There's some foot slides. There's a couple that come in rapid succession because it's a heel and a toe. A heel and a toe. Let's listen. I like
like this little click and then a foot drag right here. Let's listen to that. Yeah. So there are all these sounds that you can start to notice and pay attention to and understand uh, visually. Of course, there's something else that's prominent that you've probably wondered why I haven't discussed yet, and that is throughout the entirety, there's this red line down low in the spectrum. How low? Well, let's take a look. If we go down and zoom way in, we can see that it's from kind of about maybe 20 hertz all the way up to about maybe 300 hertz is its prominent thing. That sound is actually the sound of the refrigerator compressor humming, maybe a fan. Let's listen. All right, there it is. So now I hope to have shown you that the spectrogram gives you lots of things that your eye will see that can help guide your ear. And it also gives you lots of uh, the ability to take things that you hear and find out where they are on the spectrum. It's a kind of a musical score, except it's more for sound than music. You can use the same thing with music, but I wanted to start with something so simple. Um, that you would be surprised at how complex it actually was when you took a close look. Thanks.